Good afternoon, my name is David Cappiello and I am coming to you today via webcam in support of the new Normal Connecticut chapter. I'm going to be serving as your president of the uh, chapter which will serve eight counties in Connecticut, all eight counties, with educational and other programming to support the de decriminalization and ultimate legalization of marijuana. Now 2010 next year will be an important year. It will mark a hundred years from the earliest uh, known marijuana ordinance, negative uh, punitive marijuana law that I'm aware of in the United States, which was in Texas. It was a law that uh, penalized uh, basically uh, Mexicans, a racist uh, law that was used to control Mexicans through uh, penalizing them for possession of marijuana. Now, our chapter intends not only to work on uh, decriminalization and medicalization, but also on legalization. Uh, it's not business as usual in Connecticut anymore. Morally, ethically, and fiscally, we can no longer afford the marijuana prohibition, and it is cruel and unusual punishment to our fellow citizens. And uh, as, as I said, we can't afford to jail people for their relationship with a plant. Uh, this is nonviolent crime, a uh, crime that was uh, made up essentially by uh, laws that have been passed since, since 1910, but really since 1937 when the federal prohibition began. Um, we believe a legalized environment for marijuana in Connecticut could provide the state with valuable tourism dollars if it were made available to adults age 18 and over for recreational purposes in controlled environments. And um, also, as a medical program, we feel that uh, that would be a first step for those who are suffering, suffering from chronic, um, even terminal illnesses that can benefit from marijuana. As some of you know, there is a law that uh, came on the books in 1981, it still exists in Connecticut, which does recognize the medical um, use of marijuana for chemotherapy and also for glaucoma. Unfortunately, this law is unworkable because it was written uh, with the intention of a doctor writing a prescription, which is currently um, prevented by the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration. More recent laws, which have been uh, written since 1996, generally provide for the doctor to um, give a recommendation, either oral or written, to the patient, uh, hence getting around this DEA um, problem and um, newer laws have worked to a great extent for patients. So we hope to pass the medical bill and the decrim bill this year, but 2010 we're looking to uh, as a year of legalization in Connecticut. Um, if not outright uh, marijuana legalization itself, we certainly intend to educate the public like it's never been educated before in our state. We will hold rallies at the Capitol uh, where permitted, and we will also hold educational forums as we're doing today. We're going to reach out on the web through webcam uh, broadcasts, which we hope that uh, people from the public will um, also submit to us. They will be uploaded to our website and also available on YouTube. Now, as I speak to you today, there are undoubtedly many local college students across the nation uh, and here in Connecticut who have suffered from loss of federal financial student aid because of a simple possession for marijuana charge, a conviction uh, that cost them a criminal record and will bar them from this uh, financial aid for the rest of their lives or until the law is changed. Meanwhile, murderers and others who have committed violent crimes, to the best of my knowledge, are still able to receive federal student aid. This has got to stop, and certainly uh, a G-Crim bill here in Connecticut would avoid the criminal record, which would um, probably not trigger the um, loss of federal student aid. Uh, possession of an ounce or less under the proposed law would result in something similar to a traffic ticket. While we believe that uh, there should be no punishment for an adult using marijuana recreationally or medicinally, this is certainly a, a good start and um, it could be supplemented by local town and cities um, whose councils could vote on um, possible lowest enforcement priority legislation. Uh, this has passed in many cities and towns across the nation and has been very successful in the city of Seattle. Hopefully that's something we can also encourage here in Connecticut. Uh, again, we would like to see volunteers and other interested parties contact us and let us know how it is that you would like to make marijuana legal in Connecticut. 
2010, again, is going to be an interesting year for us, as it is really the 100th anniversary of uh, one of the earliest marijuana laws in the United States. Um, while these laws have been mostly uh, racist and punitive towards uh, those of um, uh, various protected classes and uh, also poor whites, uh, it is reaching into the middle class with this uh, student aid uh, loss provision. I believe that's through the Higher Education Act. So we invite you to work with us over the next year on the web and in person to legalize marijuana in Connecticut. It's really the only way to go and we've had a hundred years of messy prohibition to prove that uh, prohibition does not work in the United States of America. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you on the web and in person more often. A few final thoughts I had were that uh, some of us will be privately working with experts in the field to determine whether it is viable to file a lawsuit in our state courts to protect patients and other persons who are victims of the marijuana laws. This will be done in the event that politicians fail again to achieve the action required to overturn Connecticut's marijuana laws, especially regarding medical patients. Uh, we will be working on this, whether through normal or possibly uh, privately, we don't know, but we will be interviewing expert lawyers and discussing the subject. Uh, we feel a lawsuit is necessary, again, in the event that politicians fail to pass a medical bill this year. Uh, the terminally ill and chronically ill patients can no longer afford to wait in Connecticut, and certainly we should take the sick and dying off the battlefield of the war on drugs in our state. I would like to, to uh, also take this opportunity to thank our local heroes, such as Dominic Vita, Michael Collins, Lorenzo Jones, Mark Braunstein, and all the other speakers here today, and uh, all of you volunteers out there on the web. We encourage you to submit uh, web logs uh, and uh, shows to us, which we will post on our website. Again, you can contact us at www.normalct.org, that's N-O-R-M-L-C-T dot O-R-G, and our email address is maryjane, one word, at normalct.org. Nice talking with all of you by webcam, and I hope this illustrates the ease at which you can create weblogs yourself about the marijuana law movement here in Connecticut. We will look forward to talking with all of you and getting to know you better in the future. Thank you very much.